our gold sponsor for the Global Mining Symposium is Cypress Development. Cypress has a large lithium project in Nevada. And here to tell us all about it is William Willoughby. He is the president and CEO. Now, Dr. Willoughby is a mining engineer. He has 38 years of experience in all aspects of natural resource development. Since 2014, he's been the principal and owner of consulting firm Willoughby & Associates. Now, prior to that, he was president and COO of International and Exco, which was acquired by Denison Mines in 2014. And he previously held various positions with tech. Dr. Willoughby, welcome back to the Global Mining Symposium. How are you keeping? I'm doing well, Anthony. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you today. Excellent. Well, we look forward to doing a bit of a deeper dive on lithium. It's one of the key commodities that we haven't spent overly a uh, huge amount of time on today. So you're here to correct that problem. So I'll pass it over to you and uh, you have our full attention. Great, great. Thanks. So I guess I can share my screen here. Let's go there, perhaps. Are we there yet? Almost there, Bill. What you just need to do is, do you have your presentation open on your screen? I do. Okay, so when you go back, if you're at the top of the screen, you'll see it says stop sharing. You click that okay. first. Stop share, okay. And then just go back down to screen share or share screen. Yes. Then you're gonna see the file of your presentation. Do you see it there? The file. In one of those windows, do you see your presentation sitting there somewhere? Uh, I don't, where is okay, it? Okay, no worries. Do you mind if I share it and then you can just tell me when to switch slides? Sure, we can okay, do that, perfect. I'll work. Great. Okay, I will do that in one second for you. Okay. You and I are pros oh, yeah. at this anyways, right, Bill? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. That okay. works. I am going to share it right now. So you just tell me when you need it switched. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today and to talk to everyone about our project and our company, Cypress Development Corp. Our project is a Clayton Valley lithium project in Nevada. This is a view of our project site. Uh, what we're looking at on the slide is... Uh, where our mine area will be located. We're standing roughly about the center of our starter pit, looking westward to a ridge which is called Angel Island. That'll be the location of our mill site. So we'll talk about today about where we've come with the project so far, some features of it, and then where we're going and some of the progress currently. Okay, can we skip there, Laura? And one more. So our focus at Cyprus is extracting lithium from clay. Uh, why Cyprus? Well, we have four areas where we feel that Cyprus is particularly well strategically positioned as far as a lithium company going forward. One is on our resources. We have a large land package, a very large resource area, and that resource has a very favorable location and it's well positioned in terms of the property and uh, physical features of the site. We'll look at that some of that later. We also have the technology. We've got a unique chloride leaching process we're working on and developing and includes ion exchange as part of that. Uh, we also have a pilot plant in operation that's part of our facilities. We also have uh, water rights that we've acquired in the last year and we're working on that will support our project. Okay. Next slide, please. So ours is an advanced project. We've completed a pre-feasibility study and our major goals coming forward in the next year are gonna to be to work on our feasibility and permitting. We've already completed a lot in 2022. Uh, last month, we were working intensively on a bot deal financing for, through PI that brought in $18 million. Uh, we also expanded our lease on our pilot plant facility, and we're in the process of testing. Our plant is operating right now, and we're working right now to get our feasibility study consultants and uh, consultants for permitting. Next, please. So um, our stock price lately has been taking a hit with everybody else in the sectors, and... Uh, 
I don't think that fairly reflects where we've come and where we're going. But our share structure is uh, good. We've got 134 million shares that are issued, 152 million fully diluted, and our cash position is excellent. We have $23 million going into the end of January before we brought in the money from the bot deal financing. So as far as financial shape for the company and where we're going, I think we're in excellent position. Okay, Nevada has a wealth of lithium and clay and claystone deposits. This is a list of the ones that either have resource or uh, um, PEAs or PFSs completed. If uh, we were to take Nevada as a whole, it would rank third in the world in terms of lithium behind Bolivia and uh, Argentina in terms of contained lithium and resources. The problem here though, is that we need to get that lithium out. You need a process to do it. That's the focus of our project. Cyprus is one of the three on this list that have advanced their projects to the pilot plant stage. Continue, please. Okay, our project is well located, uh, both with respect to infrastructure and also the physical features of our project. Uh, we're halfway between Reno and Las Vegas, three hours from the Tesla Gigafactory in Sparks. As we recall from that first slide, the terrain is flat. It has great uh, physical features for starting a mining operation. Our property position here is large. We've got 6,500 acres. It's adjacent to Albemarle's Silver Peak lithium brine operation, which has been in operation. That uh, vapor brine operation has been running for over 50 years. And the property position that we have is very important. We have enough room to site all of our facilities, our mill site, our tailings facilities, and of course our pit. Next, please. Okay, our pilot plant is located in Amargosa Valley. That's about 100 miles southeast of our project. It's in a leased facility, which is permitted and fully staffed. Uh, what you see on the slide in front of us is our leach section of our pilot plant on the left. And we've recently leased that whole of that facility. That's a 12,000 square foot facility on five acres. So we're to have all of our uh, room to expand in there and keep all of our processes under one roof. I'll talk some about our feasibility study and some of the features that lead into it. Our project has no shortage of resources. We have, as we see on this, table 1.3 billion tons in indicated resource. We only need, however, 200 million tons in a reserve. That's a probable reserve that carries through. And that is enough at five and a half million tons a year, 15,000 tons a day to support a 40 year mine life. So as far as resources and reserves, we're in great shape, but um, carrying this forward, it's all about the process. And as we go forward into a feasibility study, we're not going to need much in the way of drilling, so I don't expect the resource and reserve numbers to change dramatically there. So that feature of uh, our deposit that was allowing us to develop those resources and reserves so rapidly and easily was that the deposit is right at the surface, it has good thickness, and it's also continuous. We see this both vertically in several clay units which carry the lithium, uh, we've got three that are the higher grade ones, and uh, we have good continuity both vertically and laterally uh, around the property. Uh, the lithium is in leachable clays. That's a key to keeping uh, our operating cost on paper low and uh, carrying that project and making it look economic. So. Next, please. So, uh, these are results from our PFS as of last year. Uh, obviously, this is a little bit out of date because uh, lithium prices have skyrocketed, pushing more than uh, $60,000 a ton on spot. But uh, we'll just have to see where that winds up as we go through the feasibility study and do some market research and um, determine what the base price we're going to use in terms of the, the feasibility. As far as the other design parameters going into the feasibility, we're not looking at a lot of changes. Uh, we're talking about the same recovery, production rate, 
15,000 tons a year, trying to get closer to that 30,000 tons a year of LCE number. Our layout for the feasibility will be much similar to our PFS. Our pit is about two and a quarter miles long by a half mile wide, and it feeds into an acid leach plant. We did our PFS under the assumption of sulfuric acid leaching. We'll be shifting that now to a uh, chloride based. I'll talk about that in the next slide, uh, but the, the leach plant will be located in the same area. Uh, what we will do is look at the tailings. It's a dry stack tailings area. We'll look at locating that more in a southwest northeast orientation adjacent to the pit, thereby freeing up some of the resources which are probably under that tailings stack. All right, as we just went a couple over the minutes Bill, just a couple more minutes, okay? We do have, we're a little bit over and we have some questions from the audience, so. Oh, okay, great. Well, the flow sheet for our leaching process is similar for hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. One question is why do we go to hydrochloric acid? Well, we're in a chloride basin. So we have a salt source, which is the key to driving this process, both in generating hydrochloric acid, which is our leaching reagent and sodium hydroxide, which is our neutralizing agent. That's a key for us in that it gives us an ability to eliminate sulfur from our uh, uh, reagent needs and also have a process which is completely sustainable when we need electric power to drive the process. Uh, what we did find in our bench tests, which are now proving up in our pilot plant, is we get easier filtration, better washing our tails. Now that's proven out. And we're also able to use less water. Our, our test work so far, we're having 100% recycle of our water through the plant, and that's working well. Next, please. Plant, plant configuration is very simple. We bring sample material into the leach tank, run it through the thickeners, take the tails off site. The PLS then goes into a primary, secondary impurity removal. That's been working well. Uh, and we run it through a lithium ion exchange where we produce a concentrated lithium solution, which is then going to be shipped off site and treated by uh, Noram Engineering to produce lithium hydroxide in Vancouver. We have a number of objectives in the pilot plant. Uh, we've done three, five, three, seven and 14 day continuous operating runs, 24 hours. That's worked very well. So all the equipment that we have in the plant is um, doing its job. Uh, we've generated meaningful results, getting uh, really good handling on the tails and uh, other parts. This is a photo which shows the PLS, and uh, you can see the iron color to that solution. On the right is the distilled solution after it's been filtered through the PIR process. So that's ready to be treated in the iron exchange. So right now we're waiting for additional assays to come in from an external assay lab. Those will feed into um, the first review of the data that we have, and we'll see then what's next steps as far as working on the feasibility. Now, those are a couple more photos of the pilot. On the right, you see the clay sample material in one-ton bulk bags. One of those is the feed for one day operating in the plant. On this next photo, you see the leach tanks and thickeners. You see that on the left. You could go to the next one, please. Uh, thickeners are on the left in this slide, and on the right you have uh, our primary and secondary impurity removal area. We do our on-site assays, internal assays through an ICP. So uh, as far as ESG values go, our project in its basic design is intended to be sustainable. That's why we focused on this chloride leaching approach. Uh, we're right now starting in on the permitting process as far as the whole operation goes. Uh, working, locating consultants and uh, moving through that. Great. All right, Bill, let's let's leave it there just because we do have a bunch That's of questions. Perfect. We want to make sure that we can get to a great All presentation. Right. Um, we have one here from Stuart. With the pilot plant facility being extended with ongoing testing, do you intend to test the REEs further and update the market on that potential? Yes, we will at some point. Right now, our entire focus has been on uh, extraction and recovery of lithium. So that's job one. We'll see what comes out of it after we get to that point of having a direction there. 
So. Okay. From Lois, is uh, Albemarle involved in any way? You mentioned that they're, they're nearby and operating. Is there any relationship there? Oh, we have got no formal relationship at hand, but we have a, a good talking relationship, I would say. Okay. What about from Ernie, the time span we're looking at to put this lithium project into production? Pretty blunt. Yeah, well, we're probably uh, two years out on the permitting and try to interface that with the construction and engineering at the same time. I'd say two and a half, three years out is the reasonable time frame for a project like this. Okay, and Puthela is asking some questions around the mineral resource. Want some more information on how that resource was defined relative to reserves? Is the resource based on a fixed reporting depth? Well, we carry the resource down through our lithium clay units and floated a, a pit outline for all the areas, not including the dry stack tailings area that formed the basis of the resources. We then went back in and looked at the reserves inside of that by doing the actual mine plan and designing the production schedule around that. Okay, great. And from Peter, is your long-term goal 85% recovery, higher, lower? Oh, we'll just see where we fall out as we go through the process. You know, it's all a work in progress. Uh, I definitely want to see a number that is as high as we can get it in the mid 80s. It would be great. Excellent. Any and one more from Lois here about any any uh, desires on being on the TSX big board? Yeah, we do desire. I think we're a little ways from that still. We need to get further into this feasibility and work that way. So. Excellent. Well, Bill, we had from our audience asking questions. We had a lot of them thanking you for your responses. And I thank you for an excellent, another excellent thorough presentation. Continued success. You know, we're all looking for ways to understand how to invest in the EV space. And this looks like a pretty opportune way to do so at current valuations. Well, thanks. Appreciate that. So, right. Okay. Thank you so right, much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Take okay, care. Excellent. Bye. Bye-bye.